So the NFL draft has come and gone. And the Baltimore Ravens, they had a pretty good draft where they addressed several areas of need and some areas where it wasn't so much a need, but they got quality players. Um, But it still feels like for some reason, there's just something missing. There's something that they just need to do a little more in certain areas. But I'm not sure exactly what that is. But to help me find exactly what's missing, who's missing, and to, to figure out the best way that the Ravens can go about addressing that, I brought on two very special guests to help me with this search. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and Team Keep It Clean, two very special guests in the building today. We got the fellas, uh, Rodney, Rodney and Jose from Lunch Break Hot Take in the building. Uh, so I appreciate y'all joining us. First off, let everybody know where they can find you at, what you all do, uh, your Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff, even though it's going to be in the description. Oh, no doubt. Hey, shout out to Team Keep It Clean and the LBHT crew. Yes, we are the Lunch Break Hot Take. We do a live show every Wednesday night at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, just search up Lunch Break Hot Take on YouTube. We also stream live on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at LBHT Show. And also, uh, we do have another podcast with our, our friend uh, OTR Mike. That's called Ring Kings Podcast. Uh, you know, we cover boxing. We stream after all the big fights. Uh, you can find us everywhere, you know, all, all on the socials at Ring Kings Pod. All right, appreciate that. Now, a couple of questions before we get into it. Um, one of the things that I, I really appreciate y'all about y'all the most um, is that you aren't afraid to say some stuff that a lot of people are afraid to say. Um, you're not afraid to go against the grain. Uh, what makes y'all like that? Um, I don't know if it's a. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's it just we're just that those angry old men sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like some of the I, I, honestly, I, I think what it is is like we've been fans of our teams for, for a while now, and mm-hmm. some of the things that we see going on, you know, it's a little history repeating itself, and you know, we just don't want to, we're just not trying to hear it, right? So, like, one of the things we're going to discuss, we'll, we'll discuss, um, we, we discuss a lot on the show is not surrounding your quarterback with weapons, mm. uh, not giving them the proper protection and things like that. And although we, you know, he, B's a Panthers fan, I'm a Ravens fan. I, I love the Ravens and I'm going to root for them. But if I see something that's wrong, I'm not going to just ride with it and just say it's okay because I've seen them not take care of something like that in the past and it comes right. back to bite us. So it's, it's, I think it's just seeing it before uh, is that's, that's where I come from with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and it's pretty much the same for me. Uh, you know, when I was younger and, and and following the Panthers, I was like, "Yeah, David Armageddon is going to be great, right?" No, he's not. He's not going to be great. Okay, he's David Geddes. He was a fifth round pick. It's not going to work out. Right. Uh, and and you know, just kind of being a fan is not about just supporting everything that the team does blindly. You know, right. uh, if you you want to see the team win, you want to see the team do well. That means holding them accountable sometimes and, and, and calling them out when they don't do the right things. Right. Yeah. I, and I, I love that about y'all too. And I agree with it too, because if you just, and it's, it's like having a friend. It's like if, if your friend, you see your friend, somebody that you care about, somebody that you're riding with, you see that they, they heading down the wrong path. It's like, you don't just be like, oh, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. Exactly. Oh, you got to exactly. to the side and say, hey, nah, <laughs> that ain't it, my friend. Yeah. Now, um, another thing that I appreciate that you all do every single episode, um, you do a black history fact. Yes. Well, when we first started our live stream, it was during Black History Month. Oh, okay. I didn't know. And, that. you know, and B, me and B were like, hey, let's just do this. You know, every week, let's do it for Black History Month. And then halfway through it, we're like, you know what? We're just going to keep doing it. Yeah. You know? And that's that's pretty much what, what happened. We're like, we liked it. The, the fans liked it. Um, and we're like, yeah, we're just going to make it part of a show. Okay, cool. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So let's get to the good stuff now, man. All right. So these Baltimore Ravens. They just had a draft where they, it was a 
they drafted a little, little good mix of offense and defense. I, I feel like defense, they favored it a bit more, um, especially with some of the earlier draft picks um, and the more impactful right here, right now draft picks. Um, but they did draft Tyler Lindenbaum in the first round after trading away uh, one of their weapons in Hollywood, Brown. Um, how do y'all feel the Ravens did overall with this draft as a whole? <sighs> mixed feelings about this man like as a whole i mean talent wise i mean it's up there they they got a lot of good talent mm -hmm. um i mean let's just start with this i, I think overall i probably give them like a b minus for the, for the draft um i love 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 that they got tyler lindabom and daniel falele in this draft um you know we've been pounding the table that they need to protect lamar mm -hmm. um and they seem to be taking that serious so i love that move but I also hate the fact that they went into the draft knowing that they're going to trade Hollywood Brown. Mm. They see a bunch of teams trade ahead of them to get wide receivers. Wide receivers are flying off the board and they did nothing about it. And instead they took a safety. So it's one of those things where even though they know what they need to do, they just can't fight. Like, like they, they can't resist that urge to go defense, even though it's just, it's just not a defensive league anymore. Right. Like we have to be able to adjust to, um, to uh, respond when teams score on us. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, yes, we want to build this, this great defense like we used to have, and we want to be able to hold teams to 13 points, but that's just not realistic anymore. Like, teams are going to score on you no matter what kind of defense that you have, and you have to be able to respond with touchdowns. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I kind of – I gave them an incomplete uh, because – yeah, while they got a lot of talented players, one thing about the Ravens uh, that I've noticed is that they they value uh, what are generally considered lower value positions, right? Mm -hmm. The league doesn't value safeties as much as Baltimore does. You know, the league doesn't value interior linemen as much as as or interior defensive linemen as much as Baltimore does, um, and they they undervalue offensive players just in general, and particularly wide receivers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I like the Kyle, Kyle Hamilton pick a lot yeah. more until we found out they knew they were trading uh, Hollywood Brown. And I'm like, you can't sit at 14 and, and just wait and wait and wait and let all the receivers, all the top receivers go ahead of you. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of a Baltimore thing, right? Like they, they consistently are surprised when other teams value offensive weapons. Like yeah. they're like, well, I can't believe these guys went that high. Well, they're the top wide receivers in the draft. They're not going to just fall to you. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of just the talent, I thought they, they did a pretty good job. Uh, but the, the, you know, outside of Hollywood, uh, trading away Hollywood and not replacing him, the biggest problem is they drafted six players in the fourth round. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For one. one being, one being a punter. I don't care how many one, draft picks that you yeah, had. One, one being a punter. Like, you, you didn't hit on six fourth round picks. No. You were never going to hit on six fourth. I mean, uh, EDC said before the draft, he knew they weren't going to hit on six fourth round picks. So, you know, call somebody up, package those picks up, move up and get an impact player. Hmm. And, and you know what was crazy? I, I really, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be wrong about this. No way. I went into this draft for sure on two things. And this is before the Hollywood trade. I was for sure that they were going to draft the receiver in the first three rounds. I would say it so many times. And then when they traded Hollywood, I was like, oh, yeah, they 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 about to do it for real. <laughs> yes. For yeah. sure. Without a doubt. Yeah. They didn't do it first round. I was like, oh, okay. They're going to do it tomorrow, second round for sure. Third round, ah, but second round, they they doing it for sure. Second round came around, nope. Third round came around, nope. I was like, oh, okay. Well, fourth round, ah, they could do it here, but if they do it here, even if they did it in the third round, then the guy really wouldn't have much hope. But they didn't do it at all. Um, but the thing that I was even more for sure about than that, Ravens were going into the draft with 10 draft picks. I'm like, there is absolutely no way that these dudes are going to draft 10 rookies yeah. they upped that and they drafted 11 right yeah yeah um and we've actually talked about this in the past um i think it was the 20 was it the 2019 draft b Wh which draft was it with, with patrick queen 2020 draft 2020 2020 draft yeah. um i think they had like 11 picks in that draft as well and we said look on average um nfl teams hit on about 30 percent of their draft picks right so if you have 10 if you drafted 10 players three or four of them are, are realistically going to work out for your team. Hmm. So we were asking our fan base, which four do you think are going to work out? There's the same thing in this one. Like, okay, we have 11 picks. You know, pick four, maybe five players are going to work out. 
Mm. The rest, good question. The, yeah, you know, the, the rest aren't going to work out. So, which ones do you, do you like, and then which ones do you think we wasted our time with? All right, uh, you know, six fourth round picks. I know it's a fourth round, but man, like that's a lot of picks. That's a lot of picks for you know the majority of them to not work out. I mean, we gotta wait and see. Maybe we we're wrong right. about that, but hopefully, uh, history history says probably not. Mm. Yeah, and um, wow, that yeah, six fourth round picks. I remember like you kept hearing it on like ESPN. You kept seeing it all over Twitter. Ravens got the record for most fourth round picks. And I'm just looking at all these tweets and all these news articles. Like, yeah, they do, but nah, I ain't picking those six people in the fourth. But nah, they ain't doing that. Yeah. I mean, and, and to just sit there and look, I think David Ajabo is a fine prospect, mm -hmm. but to it, to take him over a wide receiver when George Pickens was sitting there uh, and, and you may may not even get anything out of Ajabo this year was alarming to me, uh, to say the least. Like, I don't have a problem with taking Ajabo if you're, again, going to package up some of those later picks, you know, get back into that second round and still get Pickens. That's fine. But they said, no, Jabo's our guy, and then we're going to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, like I said, I, I can't give them a grade until I see what their plan is at wide receiver. Right mm -hmm. now, it doesn't look like they have one. But, you know, I mean, there's still a lot of time left in the offseason. If they go out and they get, you know, a, a, a true number one receiver or, you know, just a couple guys, a couple of talented guys, mm -hmm. uh, then then that changes my, my outlook on the draft. But right yeah. now, it's not looking great to me. Yeah. And that's a perfect segue into this next segment because I um right now I, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't see what the Ravens plan is at wide receiver because the situation is just so weird. I, I've been saying before the draft and even right up right up after the draft, yeah, it's still early in the offseason, but at the same time, it's kind of not. And when you think about it, um, you look at everything sort of in retrospect, it's like, all right. And Hollywood put it out there. I talked to Lamar about uh, getting traded for the past couple of years. He said this, this is not a new topic. It wasn't anything that just came out of nowhere. He'd been on this for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the Ravens knew even this offseason, hey, all right, we're going to trade Hollywood. Hollywood wants out. Uh, and I, I said it before, Ravens are like the new NBA because it seems like a lot of the players who won that, the players are taking over. Because Hollywood wanted out, he got out. Orlando Brown Jr. wanted out, he got out. Hayden Hurst wanted out, he got out. So if you're a Ravens player uh, and you're a contributor too and you want out, Ravens go, okay, hey, do your thing. Um, but with them having known that Hollywood wanted out and them, of course, I'm sure they were like, all right, yeah, we're going to trade him. I, I just, I'm a little bit concerned and confused as to why the receiver wasn't addressed earlier in the offseason if you knew like so you could cover this already if you knew that Hollywood was going to be gone. And because I've heard that heard some stuff about, oh, yeah, the Ravens, they they wanted to draft one of the top receivers in the draft. Um, but they, yeah, like you mentioned earlier, they didn't move up for anybody. They didn't move around for anybody. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, what what do you guys think? I know, I know Brody just mentioned that he don't even think they got a plan at receiver. But what do you, what do you think is next? Because I just for me, I, I just really just don't know. Man. When they didn't draft a single wide receiver, I I mean I just knew that they had they must have had something worked out with the team, but they're gonna they're gonna trade for somebody. But you know, we haven't heard anything yet. Mm -hmm. I think in their mind, a trade is gonna get done, right? I think they're thinking, hey, we just gotta be patient, you know, we'll we'll land somebody. They probably have some some players that they're looking at, you know, some some possible deals that they can try to work out. And if not, I'm sure they had the backup plan of going to get a, a you know, a couple of veterans like they usually do. I mean, I think that was in the works anyway, that they're going to bring in a, a, another veteran like a Jarvis Landry or somebody like that. Um, but worst case scenario, they'll say, yeah, you know, we'll pick up a we'll pick up a veteran and uh, we'll, we like our guys. I mean, that was their plan last year with Orlando Brown. Right. Uh, they knew ahead of time that they need to move on from Orlando Brown. They were never going to pay him. Right. And, you know, Orlando Brown just kind of sped up the process a little bit. And they said, yeah. ah, Bill Nueva, good enough. Good <laughs> enough. You know, we, we've drafted We've drafted a lot of linemen. And, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I think I think on EDC's part, he figures I'm drafting all these guys. I know it's not me. I know it's not Ozzy who's still in the building scouting. Like, I know we're getting the right players. It's on the coaches to coach him up. And I feel like that's a that's that's kind of message that he's trying to send. Like, hey, I'm getting the guys. We're not wrong. You guys need to get it right. Yeah, I think that um 
right now, you know, before the draft, you heard that New Orleans and Cleveland were both interested in signing Jarvis Landry. Uh, New Orleans went and got Chris Olave. Cleveland got David Bell fairly early in the draft. I think Baltimore is doing the thing where they kind of hang back and they're waiting for Jarvis Landry to run out of options mm. and then come to Baltimore so they can <laughs> sign him sign him on the cheap. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, I think that they are, you know, they, they signed several undrafted free agents and they're going to try and sell uh, Bateman, Duvernay, Wallace, Prochet. And hey, one of these guys is going to pop, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe they go out and get uh, another vet. I'm looking, you know, right now you got Julio Jones, Landry, Will Fuller, T.Y. Hilton, Ooh. Cole Beasley. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it gets worse from there, right? I mean, Odell, yeah. <laughs> Odell is on the list, but, you know, he, he's, he's coming back from that torn ACL. Not sure right. when exactly he's going to be healthy. Uh, so that's what I, I think that they're trying to outlast Jarvis Landry right now. Mm. Uh, what I think their plan should be is going to get in DK Metcalf. Ooh. Uh, I, I think that they need to just come up off of next year's picks, give him the contract, and and get Lamar a real number one receiver. Uh, I like him better than Debo for, for Baltimore. Uh, mm-hmm. especially considering their, their coaching situation and Debo not wanting to, to play the role that he's currently <laughs> playing. Uh, but yeah, if, if they go out and they get a DK Metcalf and mm-hmm. then even still go sign, you know, Jarvis Landry or one of those other veteran oh, wide receivers, uh, I think that you're looking at a, a Super Bowl contender in Baltimore. If they say Rashad Bateman, man, that was a really impressive 500 yards. You're the man now. Uh, I think that you know they're a team that challenges for the playoffs and that ultimately gets there and can't score and gets eliminated again. Mm, yeah. mm, well, we mm. we had to bring in at least two wide receivers. We lost three this off season, right? Uh, we, we released Miles Boykin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't bring back Sammy Watkins, and we traded away Hollywood Brown. So we at least need to bring in two more wide receivers. So yes, mm-hmm. it needs to be trade for one and bring in a veteran for sure. Okay. Yeah. I, and with DK Metcalf, and really just with any um receiver, young guy who would demand a contract uh, in addition to being traded. Um, I was listening to Speak for Yourself uh, yesterday with Marcellus Wiley and um, Acho. Um, and that's I, I like watching and listening to that show. It's very interesting, um, to say the least. But yeah. sometimes I agree <laughs> with what stuff they say. Sometimes I don't. But it's very entertaining. So I appreciate it for that. Um, but Marcellus Wiley, he said something. And when he said it, it like... It hurt my soul, but it, it was true. He said for the Ravens, um, why would they pay a receiver like 25 mil per year or whatever when they don't really care about a receiver like that, when they don't value receivers like that? And that's just where I'm a bit um, I'm a bit worried um, and my expectations for them trading for one of these premier wide receivers, they're, they're super low because of that. Um, and I don't feel like uh, I feel like with the Ravens, they really have to prove like, hey, a, re- a receiver can thrive here. So that's why I um I know Rodney mentioned that, that they could possibly go with the undrafted rookie free agents and the guys that they already got. Um, That's why I think that that I, I, I'm kind of in the back of my mind. Think, oh, they got to have something up their sleeve, right? They got to have something planned, but I, I'm not going to expect it. But um. Yeah they will have to really like prove to people like, Hey, receivers can eat here too. Um, in order to attract people to the Ravens. Yeah. And, and this has been, this is a, really a, a philosophy issue. Cause I know a lot of people say, Oh man, Lamar Jackson, that's cause of him. Or Oh, Greg Roman, that's cause of him. No, no, it, it goes a lot deeper than that. This has been happening even in the Flacco days too. Yes. This is, this is nothing new when it comes to receivers, just not being attracted to the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Um, this has been an ongoing thing. How do y'all feel about that? Well, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. I know. I was gonna say uh, the 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 thing with Baltimore is, uh, and, and this is what I, I really feel is the the solution in Baltimore is just a a a shift in leadership, uh, mm. and that that's from Eric Acosta on down through the coaching staff and everything because their way doesn't really work. Uh, they missed the playoffs four out of five years before Lamar Jackson showed up. Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. saved all their jobs. All of them. Right? Uh, you know, there, I mean, there was talks about John Harbaugh being fired in that season, you know, in, in Lamar's rookie season until they switched to him and they went 6-1 and one down the stretch and made the playoffs and all that. Uh, so, I mean, what they do, the way they view the league, the way they, they value players, it doesn't work. 
but they have a superstar quarterback, which is the most important thing in the league. And he's kind of elevating the team. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, even with that, you know, even they see him go out there and win unanimous MVP, they see him carrying the offense. They still are not, it's not clicking in their head that, Hey, maybe we need to surround this guy with talent and, and mm-hmm. let him carry us where we want to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think ultimately the, the, the fix in Baltimore is for sure Harbaugh being gone and, and coming in with a whole new coaching staff. I think, you know, um, uh, I would say DaCosta as well, but you know maybe he can adjust once he sees uh, some some head start to roll. I don't know, uh, but the way they like to do things right now, I mean, they like I said they don't value the the players and the things that win in the NFL today. Mm. Yeah. And also, we, we we also um we have to start asking like what do they value because they don't they don't value edge rushes either, right? I tweeted out before the draft that ed, like pass rushing is not a priority for the Ravens and. A lot of people disagree reaction. with that. Yeah, we got some, we got we got a little reaction for that, but they don't value pass rushing. They've been showing you that for the last few years as well, right? Um, Matthew Judon, they're like, no, well, even before that, Zadarius Smith, they weren't going to pay Zadarius Smith. Um, okay, let him go, and you see what what kind of players Zadarius Smith turned out to be. Matthew Judon, um, uh, Yannick and Gakwe, both gone immediately as soon as they leave. You see what kind of players they are. So we've we've always had good players here at pass rushing, mm-hmm. but the scheme just doesn't really rely on that. Like they, they want to blitz. And I think even with the new uh, coach there, Mike McDonald, they still want to be a blitz heavy team. That's why they're not that worried about a top end edge rusher. So mm-hmm. I never really thought that that was somebody we were going to get in the draft. And, you know, that's why the job will, even the job will pick people are excited about the job pick. He, he they're not going to rely on him this year. That's something for down the road. Hopefully he can recover and give us something a l- little bit towards the end of the year and go into next year. But this year, mm-hmm. you know, well, we got Justin Houston there if need be, but their plan is to blitz. Mm. And I, um, when you mentioned the, uh, the part about the pass rushes, uh, them just continuously letting guys go. I think the Ravens, uh, they felt like, all right, we got 55. We're going to be straight. Whoever on the opposite side of him, we could, we could put anybody over there and we're going to be just fine. Um, and it seemed like that. For a little while, but recently, uh, and especially once Terrell Suggs, once he was gone too, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of that got sort of uh, exposed, I mm-hmm. guess. And um, yeah, that, it just it has been rough. That they had some ups, they had some downs as well. Um, but I think the uh, a lot of the philosophy there, and that's something that I've been talking about a lot in the offseason, that the, for the Ravens to really be uh, contenders, not competitive, but contenders, a lot of the philosophy would need to change. Yeah. Um, so that's. It's, it's just big because I feel like with uh, like pass rushing guys, like you mentioned the Matt Judon, Darius Smith, I think Ravens felt like and maybe even still feel like, well, David Ajabo, we'll see because um, he was a second round pick. So that's a little bit different. But more recently, they I feel like they felt like, all right, well, we drafted this guy and Matt Judon with a fifth round pick. Oh, yeah, he turned out good. We'll just run it back. We could do another fifth round pick. But Darius Smith, he was like a fourth or fifth round pick. I forget what round he was in. Yeah. Oh, he turned out good. Oh, and we're flipping. We get a comp pick for him when he signed big money somewhere else. We'll just run it back all over again. Um, but it's it's important that uh, the Ravens do quality um, over quantity. And, and that's something that we talked about on here prior to the draft. Um, and that's a, that's another reason, too, why I didn't, of course, hope that every 11, all 11 draft picks work out. Um, but to be realistic, like you mentioned, uh, the 30%. That Jose mentioned earlier, a lot, yeah, a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. Hopefully, this could be the draft where 100% works out. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll yeah, see. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, yeah, we need, but, we need it, <laughs> yeah, they really do, man. Because I, um, with the quality over quantity, that was one of the biggest reasons why I didn't feel like they were going to use all 10 picks because I just knew, like, all right, Ravens got all these picks, especially the six and the, or the, the five and the fourth round that they had before. Um, I'm like, they, they're gonna use some of those to move up. Uh, but it just it didn't happen. So hopefully it ends up working out. And I just like honestly, uh, you know that the 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 hit rate in the draft goes down significantly in every round. So why is the fourth round where you want to stack up on draft picks <laughs> <laughs> instead of the second or third? Like why why do you want to get all of the picks that you can in in a in a uh, a round where you know you're yeah. not going to hit on these on these picks? Cheap uh, labor. Cheap labor. Yeah. Cheap labor. 
Yeah. They, they, man, they, they're cheap starting in the late first. Well, right? look, this this is the thing with them. Man. I think yeah. they've gotten to a point where, I, you know, uh, they, they're kind of they're a victim of their previous success. Mm. They um they they're more interested in getting bargain deals, right? Um, uh, like like Engraver said, cheap labor. Labor. They're more interested in that than just making sure that they have the best talent possible. Um, and we say it all the time, like when you pay for, you know, when you get these bargain deals, all you worry about is getting bargain deals. You get what you pay for, mm. right? All you end up with when you start the season is a worse team than you than you could have had because you're just getting you're getting guys that, oh, well, he's a steal because he only he only costs this much and he's good enough, but he's not great. He's not the best. So you, you know, you're making your team as a whole a worse team because you're getting guys that are just good enough. And just good enough isn't good enough when you get to the playoffs. Yeah, like you you can say, hey, uh, we'll get Justin Houston at $4 million, and that'll be uh, you know 20% of, of what Von Miller's making, and he can give us like 60% of Von Miller's production. So that's a, that's a great value. Uh, but when you start playing the games, all you're getting is sixty percent of Von Miller. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Va- value doesn't doesn't have a position on the field. Right. Mm. Okay. So in closing, uh, I know Bradley talked about it before, but what do the Ravens need to do next to really take this team to that next level? All right. You want me to start, B? Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, like I know it sounds like doom and gloom when we, when we uh, point out the, the things that are wrong with them, but I don't think it'll take much. I, I think, you know, with when you have Lamar, you, you, Lamar covers up so much of your weaknesses mm-hmm. and highlights some of your strengths. Um, I think they go and get a, a, a good starting wide receiver, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, and one person we haven't mentioned that, that's coming up for contract as well is Terry McLaurin. Uh, that's probably my favorite one. Uh, we get one of those guys um, that changes things. And also it has to be that in a combination of <sighs> Greg Roman. Yes. Greg Roman is here. We got to deal with it. But if you notice, they've been bringing in a lot of help on that offensive side of the ball. Uh-huh. T Martin, Keith Williams, uh, who was that other guy that they brought in? Um, Dixon. Dixon. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like conspiracy theory. Jose feels like this might be a situation Mm-hmm. Maybe behind the scenes, it is. They they kind of downgraded. They kind of downgraded Greg Roman's uh, role a little bit. Like, hey, listen, um, we we're going to give you the we're going to give you the uh, uh, Marty Morningwig offer, right? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Okay. Hey, we're not going to fire you, but uh, you're not necessarily calling plays anymore. So, uh, hopefully, something like that's going on where he doesn't have as much control over the offense as he used to. They're just doing it quietly. That w- those two things would be huge. Those two things would be huge if, hey, uh, we're changing up the uh, the offense just just slightly. We're still going to be a running slightly. team, mm-hmm. um, but we're going to implement a lot of passing, and Gray Roman is not going to have as much input in that and get another star wide mm-hmm. receiver. I, I think mm-hmm. we're Super Bowl contenders if we do those two things. Okay. Bradley? Yeah, no, I, I agree. If they fix the wide receiver situation, uh, they can be Super Bowl contenders this year. The problem is – uh, you know, normally I, I say, "Hey, man, get Lamar uh, the O line, get him, get him a receiver, and he'll take you where you want to go." Uh, but this isn't really like the other years because, I mean, the AFC North is probably the best division in the NFL, uh, and right now they're arguably the worst team in it. Uh, even if they go out and they get a, a DK Metcalf, it's going to be extremely tough coming out of that division. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I think they can do it if they do if they go. You know, if they go all in, you know, I think they can do it. But if they try to kind of half step and like, oh, well, we'll get Julio Jones and 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 we'll go and get you know Will Fuller and hope he stays yeah. healthy for the year, I think they're they're going to end up not making it. Um, like as I said, you know, with the coaching staff, it kind of is what it is. Greg Roman has been the coordinator on a Super Bowl team or a team that made it to the Super Bowl they didn't win, but uh, so you know, he he can get you there. Yeah. If you have the talent. And and this is kind of one of the things that, that I I that irritates me talking with Ravens fans a lot is hey, why would we bring in a, a great wide receiver? Why would we get DK Metcalf when Greg Roman is here and he's just gonna hold him back? Well, because if you think your coach is bad at his job, you need to give him more talent, not less. 
uh, mm. and, and to, to be Ooh. able to overcome his, his shortcomings, right? Yeah, yeah. You, miti- like you mitigate you yeah. to mitigate poor coaching. You need Ooh. overwhelming talent. No, nobody okay. says, "Hey, man, our our quarterback isn't the best. Let's uh, let's not bother investing in this online, right?" <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah. but yeah, I think if they if they go out and they get a high end receiver. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to be set. It's just going to be it's going to be a tough season regardless because oh, of man. that division they're in and and the AFC in general really uh, really stacked up this season. So it's going to be tough. All right, perfect, perfect way to end it. I appreciate y'all coming. <laughs> on, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man! All right, so shout out to Lunch Break Hot Take for joining us. On today's show, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to their YouTube channel and follow them on Twitter as well. Um, all of that stuff is down below in the description. Jose, Rodney, appreciate the both of y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having appreciate it. Shout out to you already know, man. We out.